Hi, this is Professor Favors with the lecture uh, on compound sentences. So we're going to look at method number two, which is using a semicolon by itself when you want to join two simple sentences. And so that means we're going to review method number one, as well as the five simple sentence patterns. So this is the lecture on compound sentences using method number two, semicolon by itself. This lecture also reviews the five simple sentence patterns as well as method number one, which is using a comma plus one of the fanboys. This corresponds to the practices, assignments, quizzes, and the information is taken directly from the Fundamentals of College Writing textbook for the course. So just, revi um, just sort of reviewing the five simple sentence patterns that you can find on pages 29 to 36, and then, uh, which is your main discussion, and then a review of those five simple sentence patterns you can find on pages 41 and 45. So what is the simple sentence? The simple sentence is defined as a sentence that houses a subject and a verb, and that makes sense without any additional phrases or words. No one is asking you to create a complete sentence uh, in terms of a, com well, there is, a simple sentence can be considered a complete sentence, but uh, without any additional words or phrases, it may not necessarily be a complete thought. But a simple sentence is considered an independent clause. And here are your main two examples we have gone over before, Tom threw the ball and then John ran. And as we noted in the previous audio lesson, uh, we don't know why Tom threw the ball and we don't know why John ran. But as two simple sentences, they can stand alone as uh, as two independent clauses without necessarily completing the thought, answering why. These two sentences are considered independent clauses and make sense apart from adding other words. And so the subject is the who or what performs the action, the actual person or thing that is actually performing the action. So the cat chased the mouse. And then who chased the mouse? The cat. Verb. Uh, is uh, shows action or links the subject to words that describe or identify it. So the quarterback fumbled the ball. Fumbled is in the past tense. It, it is the verb of the sentence. Then Tony Romo is the Cowboys quarterback. Is is part of the B verb family. So B uh, is, am, are, was, and were. And then phrase, a group of words without a subject and a verb. Uh, so a lot of times we kind of write the same way we talk. And in and, and many ways we can use... Uh, phrases when we are in, say, a creative writing class. But for formal academic writing, you have to complete your sentences. And then, of course, a clause, a group of words with a subject and a verb. Um, so that can be, if you have just a subject and a verb, it's considered a clause and it's considered an independent clause. Of course, if you look at the second sent, uh, the second example after the class ends, it's considered a fragment. It is a prepositional uh preposition uh, uh, with the object uh, class, which creates a prepositional phrase, and it is considered a fragment. So you would need to add an independent clause um, to make the sentence complete. When you understand the simple sentence as functioning as an independent clause, it is easier to detect what might be a fragment or dependent clause. So always remember that the dependent clause is your baby. The independent clause is your mother. The mother does not need the baby to, to function as an adult. The baby needs the mother to, um, uh, to be fed, to be clothed, to be changed, etc. Then, of course, remember the simple sentence patterns, those um, subject verb, compound subject verb, subject compound verb, compound subject, compound verb verb subject, and then verb compound subject. You can always re-listen to that audio lesson on sentence patterns there, okay? And then of course, those were your exercises where we identified the patterns. So the man jogged, the man and his dog jogged, sweet potato pie tastes and smells, a Mazda, a Chrysler, and a Volkswagen were, one of my favorite movies is Star Wars. And I noticed that many of you got this particular uh, one uh, incorrect on the quizzes. Uh, because remember that this is a verb to subject. So that means immediately find the verb in the sentence and then you will see the subject that follows after that. And then when we do a rewrite, we know this is true because Star Wars, if we play Star Wars in the subject position, we see that the verb comes right after it. And then of course, neighbors cut, weeded, and mended. 
And then he and I ran and swam. And then, of course, identify the subject and verb, understanding that once you know what the subject of the sentence is, uh, you will be able to locate the verb and, and determine whether it is singular or plural. Also, when you are confronted with a subject that uh, subject of the sentence that is followed by a prepositional phrase, ignore the prepositional phrase. As you see in the first sentence, the remake of Greece was very successful. Of is the preposition, Greece is the object of the preposition, which creates a prepositional phrase. So ignore it, pretend that it's not there, and then now look at the subject, which is remake, and determine what the verb is for the sentence. And of course, the Supreme Court makes the final decision. Supreme Court is considered one because we only have one Supreme Court that is at the federal level. However, if you look at all of the state-based Supreme Courts, then you could add S at the end of court. And then, of course, your your verb would change, uh, will would drop that S and it would become the Supreme Courts or the state Supreme Courts make the final decision. And the fourth Thursday in November is celebrated. It's Thanksgiving Day. Jennifer and Cameron like to paint. Several exchange students from Europe are staying with local families. And then here are your jacket and hat, and that's the reverse, so verb, subject. So once you know what the subject of the sentence is, which is a compound subject, jacket and hat, then we know what the verb is. So when we looked at method number one for the previous lesson, which you can find on pages 47 to 53, we were looking at the compound sentences, how we would how would we join uh, two simple sentences using a comma and fanboy? So a compound sentence is defined as joining two or more simple sentences with a coordinating conjunction, a semicolon by itself, or a conjunctive adverb. So uh, we are, we've already discussed the method number one in a previous audio, and we're gonna review it here. We are now looking at semicolon by itself, and then in the in the subsequent uh, method number three audio, we will look at the conjunctive verb. So we looked at uh, Lynn likes to eat pickles from different um, uh, pattern types or different ways to join the compound sent or different ways to create the compound sentence. Uh, so Lynn likes to eat pickles. That's one thing, right? But if we wanted to add to this uh, that she does not like them on her hamburgers, we can do so using a comma plus fanboy. So in this case, we know that there is a contrast between her eating pickles and not liking them on her hamburgers. We can also use the semicolon, which we are discussing in this audio, just add the semicolon. So you don't have to uh, try to figure out where to add, what you need to add. You're still in the very same place. You just add a semicolon. You don't need to butt there. And then however is one of your conjunctive adverbs where uh, that pattern is uh, semicolon, conjunctive adverb, comma. And that's that's the pattern that you want to uh, keep. So this is you joining uh, two, I mean, uh, uh, two simple sentences, three different types, okay? And then, uh, of course, the patterns, method number one is comma plus fanboys, method number two, semicolon by itself, method number three, comma plus conjunctive adverb plus, um, I'm sorry, semicolon, I don't know why that happened. Semicolon plus conjunctive adverb plus comma. Okay, so as a result, et cetera. So in, in using exercises method number one, we use a uh, coordinating conjunction and we rewrote the sentences. So Lola wanted to buy a new car. Uh, she started to save 10% of her weekly paycheck. So there is already a comma there. And so... Uh, and I added the last two sentences as a way to show you how you could still change those sentences. So we're adding a comma for method number one and then one of the fanboys. Then if we wanted to add a conjunctive adverb, it would be semicolon, conjunctive adverb, and comma. And then, of course, the topic, the main focus of our particular uh, discussion here is about the semicolon. So these are your different examples that we went over. Okay. So then now uh, we need to look at method number two, semicolon by itself. So this discussion can be found on pages 57 to 59 in the course text. Same definition in terms of um, how to understand a compound sentences joining two or more simple sentences. Uh, 
So when you want to add two simple sentences that are closely related, but you do not want to add a period, you can use a semicolon by itself. So that lets you know also that uh, where you see the semicolon is you can also place a period there. Essentially, anything on the right side of the semicolon just adds more value to what is on the right side, what is on the left side of, of the semicolon. So here is... Here is an example. Sophie is a Siamese cat. Samantha is a pit bull terrier. These are two different types of animals. They're pets, uh, but it's, it's just adding more information about the differences between what Sofo uh, Sophie likes and what, what Samantha likes. Of course, you can always add a comma and a but. So looking at the exercises, method number two, use a semicolon by itself between two simple sentences. So we know that your book is on the table, your pencils are on the floor of two different sentences, uh, two simple sentences. When you are trying to figure out whether or not they are, just read um, the uh, sentences together. So what you see here in these five examples uh, where the two simple, uh, two simple sentences are running together uh, without any punctuation, that's what we would call a runoff. Okay, if we play, say for instance, your book is on the table. Okay, does that sound like a com uh, complete sentence, right? And then your pencils are on the floor. Does that sound like a complete sentence? Now, if we say for instance, we added a comma in between, that would make it a comma splice, right? So we could not add a comma alone. We would have to add one of the fanboys, right? But our goal is to add simply a um, semicolon. But say, for instance, we wanted to add a period, right? Even though we're not looking to add a period, we would have to end one thought, your book is on the table, and begin another, which would require you to capitalize the uh, first letter of the word in the next sentence, your pencils are on the floor, right? So we can... Go ahead and decapitalize and just add a semicolon, and that solves our problem, right? So remember, you can always add a period. If you just want to be safe, you can definitely add a period. You can always add a comma plus a fanboy, or you can add a semicolon plus conjunctive adverb and comma. But for this task, we're just adding a semicolon. So let's rewrite it. Your book is on the table, semicolon, your pencils or on the floor, okay? And that serves as um, a, a way to resolve the runoff. So remember, these sentences that are running together, two simple sentences that are running together without any punctuation mark in between them, and a semicolon is a punctuation mark, without any punctuation mark in between them makes them a runoff. If you simply added a comma in between them, that would make it a comma splice. So we would have to uh, appropriately correct the sentence. So the pond is home to many plants. Okay, does that sound complete? Just as a just as a a, a sentence, your the pond is home to many plants. Semicolon, koi goldfish reside there as well. Period. Okay, lightning. Struck our tree at a semicolon. It did not strike our house. Period. Okay. Samantha likes to take 20 minute naps. Semicolon. She always feels refreshed afterwards. And then the last sentence, the battery, the battery in my new watch stopped working, semicolon, I will take it to the jeweler, jeweler, jeweler <laughs> to be fixed, period. Okay, so just key points here. Uh, two simple sentences. sentences running together equals run on, okay? Um, so Jane likes to eat. She likes pickles, period. 
right? So that that would be two simple sentences running together. Uh, two simple sentences um, divided or connected using a comma would be a comma splice. So Jane likes to eat. Eat. She likes. She likes to eat pickles. She likes to eat pickles. Okay, that creates a comma splice. In both sentences, we they are uh, not grammatically correct. So we need two simple sentences uh, running together to be grammatical using a semicolon, a period, a comma plus a fanboy, or a semicolon plus conjunctive adverb plus comma to make it to make it grammatical. Okay, so if we look at Jane, Jane likes to eat, she likes to eat pickles, okay? Um, and if we want to look at Jane in multiple ways, okay, let's just cut and paste Jane in multiple ways first. Okay. And then, so we can either end the sentence here, Jane likes to eat, period, and then capitalize the she. We, and in the same area, in the same, you do not have to change the area. In the same area, Jane likes to eat, comma, and she likes to eat pickles. Okay. Same area. Uh, you could do... Um, um semicolon jane likes to eat she likes to eat pickles and then in the same area where there's a semicolon you just continue to add that semicolon uh in addition comma she likes to eat pickles right because the meaning still has to uh, has to be the same if you used but here then it's usually however if you use and here then it's usually in addition so we have a period here, we have a comma plus um, conjunctive, ad, uh, um, uh, comma plus fanboy, so that's the pattern, method number one, comma plus fanboys, okay? And then we have um, a semicolon. We don't have to add an and or anything because a semicolon works. So that's method number two semicolon by itself, okay? And then we have semicolon in addition, which is your conjunctive adverb, which is going to be method number three that we're going to discuss in the next lesson, okay? So, com, uh, I don't know why I messed that up. Semicolon plus conjunctive adverb. plus comma, okay? And that's your method number three, all right? So these are the different ways that you can um, uh, revise a sentence for grammatical appropriateness, all right? This is your lecture, compound sentences, method number two, semicolon by itself, with a review of method one and a review of five simple sentence patterns. Thank you for listening.